Hi, this is John from Super Steer, and today we want to show you how to check and install a bell crank on a Chevy Workhorse P Series chassis, the P3032, P37. This runs from 1968 on up to about 2007. Uh, this chassis has two bell cranks, one on each side. And first, we'll show you uh, what to look for on these parts. When I rock the steering wheel lightly, if you look at this movement here on the end of the shaft where the arm is attached, you can see it rocks side to side. That's pretty common on these. Uh, a little bit of play there translates to a lot of play at the steering wheel. You see I'm moving the steering wheel about probably three inches up here and the tires aren't moving. What we have here on this original style bell crank is basically a flat pin and flat bushings. Uh, the OEM unit has an adjustment for up and down play, but you cannot adjust the side play out of it. Because it's a flat bushing and a flat pin, it has to have some clearance there to turn freely. What we've done with our bell crank is we've put tapered roller bearings top and bottom with an adjustment on the top, which not only will take in play out, it also takes side play out. We can put a load on this, and yet it still turns freely with the tapered roller bearing. It's a lifetime warrantied part. If it ever does get play, it's a matter of just taking the cap off. There's a cotter pin and a nut there and adjusting it just like a wheel bearing. So it's a much heavier duty part. It's, uh, we fill these with a Amsoil synthetic grease and they're sealed. You don't have to grease them. We're going to go ahead and show you how to change a bell crank now on one of these chassis. First, we're going to remove the large nut at the bottom of the bell crank. It's an inch and an eighth. Okay, now because this is a tapered shaft and a tapered joint, like a lot of your tie rods and ball joint pieces are, even with the nut loose, this arm is still tight onto that shaft. So what we're going to do is take a pickle fork. We're going to hit it, try to break it loose. Okay, that broke the taper. So if you don't have a pickle fork, what you can do is carefully hit on the side of the arm and it'll break that taper loose. Just the jarring of it will knock that taper loose. You don't want to continue hitting on it after the taper is broken loose because you can distort the arm. Now that we've got that taper broken loose, we're going to go ahead and unbolt these four bolts. Now you'll notice on these chassis, it is the same part right and left. The driver's side is held on with four bolts, but the passenger side is only held on with three bolts. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and remove the bolts holding it to the frame. Normally you'd be working from underneath. A little easier on this bare chassis. Okay, so this is the factory bell crank that we've pulled loose. This is where the play was at in that shaft. Make sure that our frame surface is clean. We've removed this old seal here. Okay, so now we're ready to install our new P3032 bell crank. Comes with a new nut and washer on the bottom. Comes with instructions and your new mounting bolts, washers, and nuts. Whenever you're changing any steering parts or suspension pieces, really should recheck the alignment. And we note that in here, uh, alignment must be rechecked after installation. We even provide some special alignment specs for these chassis. Just kind of set that in place. Should have a washer inside and outside on each bolt. Okay, so now we're checking the torque on these. They should be at least 60 foot-pounds of torque. We're going to go ahead and lift this arm up into place and install our lock washer and nut. Okay, now we're going to check the torque and make sure we've got at least 120 foot-pounds of torque. And that completes the installation other than having the alignment rechecked. Thank you for your time. It's John at Supersteer.